in the 12th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, we hear again Jesus talking about his second coming, his return. Many times Jesus talks about the signs, talks about how we should prepare ourselves for his second coming. But it's important that we don't waste our time speculating about when this will be. It is not for us to know, it is not for the angels to know when Christ will return. But Christ gives us these warnings that we may be ready. He tells us of the things that will pass before he returns so that we won't be shocked, that these things will not catch us off guard. Even the entry into the world of Antichrist, which we will speak about in a moment. When Christ returns, there will be two types of people. There will be people for whom his return is a moment of joy, a moment of celebration, the culmination of everything they put their hope and faith in. But there will many, be many others who the return of Christ will be a moment of horror, of regret. And it is up to us now we determine which group we will be in through the way that we live. Christ calls to live in preparation, in readiness for his return. Saint Gregory Pal Palamas says to us, in the time of Noah, God flooded the earth with water. And in his incarnation, Christ filled the earth with his righteousness. But even then, when the earth was filled with Christ's righteousness, his glory was hidden in our flesh. Through the incarnation, he became man. And his glory was concealed from the eyes of other men. But at his second coming, all of the heavens will be filled with his glory. The whole universe will be consumed in his glory. And in that moment, we're told, the very living and the dead will be called forth to account every moment of our lives, every thought, every word, every action. We will be called to account for everything that we are, everything that we have done. Every moment that we've turned our heart this way or that will be laid bare before Christ. So we are called now to prepare ourselves for the coming of Christ, to make ourselves ready by being faithful. Christ says those who are faithful in this life will be the friends of Christ for eternity. And then St. Anthony the Great, St. Anthony of the Desert says to us, the only thing that prevents us from living faithful lives, the only thing that prevents us from becoming the friends of Christ is laziness of soul, our own laziness. And St. John Chrysostom says we must prepare the heavenly purse not spend our money on luxuries and comforts now. St. Gregory Palamas repeats this and says, those who seek the pleasures of this life nail themselves to the earth through those pleasures. We nail ourselves to the material world through the comforts and the desire and longing for material comforts. We are called to examine ourselves. We must look and say, what does the fruit of my life look like. If we live a life of faithfulness, the fruit of our lives will be compassion, mercy, forgiveness of others, love. If we live lives filled with sin, the fruit of our lives will be judgment of others, jealousy, envy, hatred, murderous thoughts and so on. We must examine ourselves Examine ourselves now and repent. Repent of that sin which bears evil fruit in our lives. And the moment is now to do so. We have this time to repent, to prepare for Christ's coming. And he will return. We are called to be watchful. Watchful for the things that he says will come. Of course we must be watchful too, because many of us will die before he returns. We don't know the hour of our own deaths, when we will be called forth to account for our lives? Do we have another week, another day, another hour of life? None of us knows. Are we ready? Are we ready to stand before Christ? Are we ready to account 
for ourselves. Are we truly faithful in actions and not just in words? We cannot do any of this without the grace of God. Only the grace of God can give us sufficient hope in Christ's return to live faithful lives. Only the grace of God can give us strength in our struggle to repent. And these signs and these things that will pass before Christ's return. First we know the Antichrist will come. Saint, Saint Ephraim says the spirit of Antichrist is that spirit in man which tries to live a godless life, tries to live life without God. This is the spirit of Antichrist, rejection of God. But Antichrist will come in small steps, small Antichrists, small ways that we compromise, small ways that we step beyond the traditions and the truth that Christ has given to the church, small ways that we move away from God and attempt to live self-world lives. St. Gregory Palamas says this is also the spirit of Antichrist. It is self-will, self-will rather than obedience to God's will. And these small steps, small steps that seem so necessary, so practical, accept this, do this, even though our conscience may tell us otherwise. Until finally, that final step, that final step, if we have taken these many small steps, that final step of accepting the Antichrist when he comes, will be the smallest of all. It will be the easiest of all. Because all these other small steps will have led us down that road in preparation. We must reject every small step to accepting Antichrist. Every small step that offends our conscience, that tells us we are doing wrong. We know this. We must not do it simply to live comfortable lives and to live according to the world and what the world is demanding of us. It will take courage. If we try to rely on our own courage, we will fail, we will fall. And we will fall many times, of course. We fall in many ways. We are all sinful. But we must get back up and hope, hope in Christ's mercy. He assures us that if we get up and repent and struggle and struggle, he will receive us and he will forgive us. But our calling is not then to speculate on when that hour will be of his return but to keep on struggling, to keep on trying to make ourselves ready to stand before Christ, even to the very final hour.